Thanks very much. Um, the title of my talk is Why You Can Be a Dubliner and Still Love Temple Bar, for two reasons. One, I think you can be a Dubliner and love Temple Bar. And two, if you try hard, you can sing it to the tune of maybe it's because I'm a Londoner, <laughs> which is as good a reason as any to form a title for anything. Whether you're a Londoner or whether you're a Dubliner, everybody, everybody who lives in a city or lives in a town carries with them a mental map of that city. And it's imperfect and it's flawed. Normal maps are rational, they're linear, everything is to scale. The mental map that an that a urban liver has is wrong, it's distorted. Areas that you're interested in are in much more detail. Areas that you don't care about are just um, forgotten. And over time, as you live in the city, you kind of rationalize your map. You fill in the gaps, you add layers of knowledge, and your knowledge of the city becomes much more rounded. And when I first moved to Dublin from the UK in 2001, I was struck by how many Dubliners had a, a black hole in the center of their mental map of the city. It was as if there was a 28-acre gap in their knowledge, pretty much where Temple Bar should be. And it reminded me of those medieval maps where parts of the continent or parts of the ocean which hadn't yet been discovered were just blank. And there was written on it, here be monsters, here be danger, here be strangers. Or in the case of Temple Bar, here be expensive pubs, here be pools of vomit, here be pickpockets, here be riots, here be people pissing in the streets. Here be people who are shipped into this city by EasyJet, by Ryanair, like so many veal calves. There's nothing for you here, keep away. It was a blank area in their city. During the Celtic Tiger, I think that Temple Bar was the very antithesis of the local shop for local people. There were no local shops in Temple Bar, and as a result, there were no local people. And this was fueled, I think, by really negative media coverage. At the height of the Celtic Tiger, for every good news story that was published in the Irish media about Temple Bar, two bad news stories were published. And that undermined any uh, regeneration of the city. But the recession has changed Temple Bar just as it's changed Ireland and it's changed Dublin. And the recession has made us think more about our cities, how we use them, what we want them for, how we live in them, how we work in them. At the moment, more than 50% of the entire population of Ireland live in a city or a town. And that proportion is only going to get bigger. We need to think more about how we regenerate cities, what we do with them, and how they look. And other regeneration projects in Dublin and around the country are beginning to collapse because of the recession. We think about the digital hub, we think about Smithfield. They're collapsing, they can't cope with the recession. But Temple Bar is, th is thriving with the recession. And I think in 2010 and 2011, we're moving into a third period of the regeneration of the area. The first period of regeneration of Temple Bar began in the 1960s, when CIE, the Central National Transport Agency, had a plan to buy up all of the buildings between the Liffey and Dame Street and Trinity College and Christchurch and demolish them and build a central transport depot for the city. It was going to be 28 acres. It was going to be the biggest concrete building in Ireland. It never happened, obviously. But what it left was Temple Bar, which created a reputation for itself as an incubation hub. People could take out leases for shops on very small rents for very short terms and experiment. And Temple Bar became a hub where people could try new things, where commerce and culture, where art and business could all work in this little small area, and where there was a healthy competition between people who wanted to enjoy things, people who wanted to make a healthy profit. During the Celtic Tiger, however, that balance, that healthy, rational debate between commerce and culture was tilted in face of, tilted towards commerce. Just as in the country as a whole, where society and the economy were struggling, everybody tilted towards the economy and left society behind. But I think the recession, the recession is changing Temple Bar. The big corporations, the big commercial interests are trying harder to find new ways of attracting new customers and trying to do new, with, new things with new ways. The pop-up restaurants, the pop-up shops that we're seeing in Temple Bar could only be founded in a recession. In Ireland, they could only be founded in Temple Bar. And so other urban projects, other regenerations are failing. But yet 3,000 people live in Temple Bar. 10,000 people work there every day. There are 300 businesses thriving in this 28-acre site. So I think it's possible to love Temple Bar and still be a Dubliner. And I think if we get more involved and we use it more, we'll hopefully get engaged more. And hopefully that little black hole at the center of your knowledge of your city might just be eroded slightly. Thanks very much.